around, but I, I just have my arms out like this. That's how I was walking around today, like moving it around. And the kids at school were like, did you make that? How long did that take you? Forever. <laughs> That's what I told them. It took me forever. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Natalie, also known as Nitty Natty. Welcome to the 36th episode of the Love in Stitches podcast. Today is Tuesday, October 15th, and it's actually a, another nice weather day here in Texas. Um, we had really cool weather for like two days over the weekend, and then it got hot again. I think it was really supposed to be 90 today, but it doesn't feel terrible outside. Like I didn't die when I walked outside of work. So that's a good thing. Oh, and there are 16 days until Halloween. I only have two countdown calendars, so I have nothing else to show, but um, of course I'm getting excited for Halloween. Um, as you can probably see, I am trying out the microphone yet again. I think it was last episode that I tried it, or it could have been two episodes ago. Um, but I know it makes the audio off, but somebody suggested to me that I could split the audio and video and align them, which I was, I'm a little hesitant to, well, I was hesitant to try because if I mess up, I have wasted an entire episode. <laughs> um, but I can also trial it. But I think I've mentioned before, I record and edit on my iPhone, and so, um, what is what is easy on a computer is not always as simple on a phone so i decided why not just try it at least for this intro section because especially today there's a lot of background noise um i wasn't thinking and i started the dishwasher which is on the floor above me so that's loud um also the air conditioning is always an issue um, my husband is cooking <laughs> So there's a lot going on today. So I figured just for the intro, I would give the microphone a try. So if the audio is off from my like speaking, um, it won't be that way for the whole video, just for a little bit, cause I am trying it out. Unless I get it to work, in which case I'll just keep on going. Um, but I wanted to show you what I was wearing. I actually did wear this today and just put something on for the podcast. Um, so let me take it off and I'm probably going to bump the microphone a billion times as I figure out how to maneuver with it, but just bear with me for a little while. Okay, so this is the Woolberry Wrap. Have it upside down. And it is a pattern by, um, I'm trying to think what she's going by. I think she just changed so that on Ravelry it says her name, Jen, Jen Peck or Jennifer Peck, um, but she is... Um, Oh my gosh, I've tested so many designs for her. Come on. I keep, all I can think of is Woolberry. Oh, Webster Street Knittery. Oh my goodness. So this is the Woolberry Wrap by Webster Street Knittery. It's absolutely massive, so there's no way I can show it all in the frame. It's a really long, like, triang or triangular, rectangular, um, more of like a parallelogram because it is slanted here on the sides and it was a joy to knit. It's a really cool construction, it's a lot of fun, but also very repetitive, which is super nice for just a long knit. Um, I use, the main color is Suburban Stitcher Predictability, and it's one of my favorite colors. There's definitely a spot where it changes because I didn't alternate skeins, oops. Two of them were really similar and the third one was definitely more purple, but because it's broken up with the brown, you, I think it's here. <laughs> Hopefully you don't notice it too much. Whatever, it doesn't matter. I, um, the brown is a La Bienna May, but I don't, I can never figure out what the actual color was. But I love wearing this at school. I will just put it around my shoulders like this. And when I stand up, it hangs um, almost touching the ground. And I'm not a short person. 
I'm like 5'6", and so that just tells you just how long this is. It's probably like 10 feet, maybe close to, no, maybe nine feet, because it hangs and doubled over and almost touches the ground. But I, I just have my arms out like this. That's how I was walking around today, like moving it around. And the kids at school were like, did you make that? How long did that take you? Forever. <laughs> That's what I told them. It took me forever. <laughs> but now seems like a good time to stop and check my audio, and I'll be right back. I actually have a finished object. Okay, so I just did a quick little check with iMovie to see if I could move the audio around, and it looks like I can. It was actually a lot easier than I thought, so for now, the microphone is going to stay. Um, I love and appreciate your feedback, so if you notice a difference in the audio, whether it's positive or negative because of the microphone, I um, do like hearing what you have to say because it helps me make the podcast better. And I am willing to do, I'm willing to try things to try to make things better, but again, this is for fun, so if it's like a crazy, thing that I have to do to make it. Like if I had to get a new program or something, or like a camera, probably not. But turns out it was actually a really easy um, fix. We're not gonna call it that yet because I haven't, oops, as I kick the stand, I haven't done the whole episode, so we shall see. But let's talk about some knitting. I have a finished object and at the beginning of this day, I didn't think I was gonna have a finished object. I actually wrote my show notes and put none for FOs, but I do have one, so I'm so, so happy. So these are Whispers in the Wind socks by um, Kay, the crazy sock lady. The ends are not woven in yet, and they are not blocked, so they're not truly, truly finished yet. Um, but I kitchenered the toe on the second sock before I set everything up, so they are done. And when I... Um, I've been saying that these need to be finished for like two weeks now, uh, but when I woke up this morning, for whatever reason, I was like, they have to be finished today by the time I podcast because I want them to be done. I've been working on them for too long. I mean, I'm in, I enjoyed them thoroughly, don't get me wrong, but I already have a pair of Halloween socks cast on that I want to be working on in October. So these need to be done. <laughs> and what was funny is when I actually looked up, um, I wanted to see how long I'd been working on them because it really did feel like forever. And I cast them on September 15th and today is October 15th. And I like to just spend about a month on my socks. So it was funny that like, all of a sudden today, it's like they had to be done. It's almost like I have an internal knitting clock that says it's time to finish things. <laughs> so checking on this. Um, so yes, I this is the second sock. So since last week, I've made really good progress. I was in the middle of the heel and I finished, I think it was like right here today maybe like right here and so i did a ton today and the way i was able to manage that is i of course knit during my morning duty so i was doing that um and then i was knitting in between like every reading group that i see um, i'm a reading interventionist so i don't have a classroom of students they come to me or i go pick them up and come to my classroom like five at a time so in between every group, there was a couple of groups that like kids were absent so we couldn't meet. I was knitting, I was knitting during lunch. I was knitting on my planning. I was knitting during independent work, made it happen. <laughs> so, so glad that these are done. I did try these on because I have mentioned before, I, I did the 56 stitch size. Usually I cast on 60 stitches for my socks. So, 56 is a little tight, and I knew that, but I hadn't actually tried them on yet. <laughs> so I did put them on the other day, the one that was finished, and it's a little tight, um, but it's not unwearable. Of course, it's not unwearable because usually you can find someone to wear it, but I wanted these to be wearable by me. <laughs> so I can get them on, and I know when I block them, I'll be able to get a little more out of them. Now, because I knew they were gonna be small, I actually knit my foot longer than normal, so, since there are fewer stitches, then I knew there would be fewer decreases in the toe, which means fewer rows, right? 
So I knew I was going to lose some length here in the toe because I wouldn't need to do as many rounds of decreasing to get to the end. So I knew I was going to lose like two rows in the toe. Um, and I also knew I would lose some length when I put the sock on and it's stretched in width. Um, so just knowing those things, instead of doing 65 rounds, which I normally do for my like size eight women's um, shoe, I usually wear a size eight in tennis shoes, I did 70 rounds. And that also put me, this was a 10 round repeat, so it made the repeat end perfectly. So win-win all the way around. Um, this yarn is Suburban Stitcher Irving, which was DFW's, her DFW 2019 show color. I make like a shadow. <laughs> That's weird. Um, it's not weird because there's a light here, but it's kind of funny. Let me fix that. There we go. Okay, so, so glad that these are done and now I can get started on, or continue working on my other sock by the Crazy Sock Lady, which I didn't pull over here because I haven't worked on it at all. But those are the heel toe do, -si -do socks and they're in really fun black, green, and orange. Halloween-y colors, so I'm excited to get to work on those. And I will tomorrow morning at my morning duty. I have a ton of yarn left over. I have like, this has to be more than 50 grams. So this will probably go back actually up here because I can use it in another project, which is great because this is a very unique colorway that is never going to be made again. So it'll be fun, I can use it for more than one project. Oh, one more thing, this is really sweet actually. Let me pull this sock off. So since I was working on these like all of today at work, um, I had a student, a fifth grader that was in my knitting club last year and she saw, I just had these sitting out. I wasn't working on them like while I was instructing, but they were sitting out. And she was like, miss, can I, um, can I knit? And she was kind of joking. And I was on the bottom part of the sock, which is just knitting. And I said, sure, you can do this part. And she was like, are you sure? I'll mess it up. I said, no, you, if you mess it up, I'll fix it. It's not a big deal. So she knit a half a row. She knit all of the stockinette on the bottom of the sock for me while I was working with other students. She was waiting like her turn basically. And I looked at it when she was done and she said, I, I just, just messed up in two places. And so I looked and she had like loose stitches in two places, but not mistakes. And I said, you didn't mess up. You just have loose stitches here and here. And I said, but it's not a big deal. It'll even out. So you can actually see the row that she did because her gauge was a lot looser. She's never worked on needles and yarn this small because she was just in my like intro class. So isn't that sweet? I decided to leave it in. You can see right there. I just decided to leave it in because um, clearly I've already made enough mistakes by choosing the wrong size. <laughs> so it doesn't really matter. But I thought that was kind of sweet. I'll, you know, while I remember that, think of her working on my sock. So I just thought that was really sweet. Okay, I have a two whips because one of those, what I thought was gonna be a whip, is an FO. So I think the first one I'll show is my design, and then I will show the mystery knit along. So last week I was in a fight with my design. It was just, it was just not going well. Um, and since then, I took a break from it for a couple days, and then I worked on it again over the long weekend, but I didn't like, put a ton of pressure on myself to do it. So I've made some decent progress. I've also added in a really cute, uh, the progress keeper that I showed, I think last week from Simply Serving. It is this Luna Lovegood and she's just got all the right colors for this shawl. So this is my design, a knit design that I am working on with, um, in collaboration with Connie, who's Chili Knits. Um, it was gonna be coming out in November, but we have since changed that to January. So hold off, it's gonna be a little longer, but I promise it will make it an improvement for sure. So here is what I have. I like that I can back up here and I still have the microphone. Hopefully that is going like I am imagining it. <laughs> but here it is, you really can't see much. I think I need to switch to a 40 instead of a 32. Um, but I've got mosaic, brioche, mosaic, and I have since I last saw you done more brioche. And I swatched, of course, before I did this design, 
but I didn't think I was gonna love these, this blue and the variegated together as much as I do. You can see I've just started, I've switched to syncopate into the um, blue being the knit and it's looking so good. I just love this. So I am, I am pleased. I am working um, a little slower on it. I'm definitely leaving it at home instead of bringing it to work, which was what I was doing and working on it during my lunch and planning and it was causing me some stress. So I decided I'll leave it at home. I'll work on it when, I, when I'm at home, which is nice too, because I've got two, um, I've got a laptop and a secondary computer screen that's like one of my husband's old ones, <laughs> which helps me get more done on it. So yeah, it hasn't been causing me as much strife. Is that the right word? I don't know. Strife? <laughs> oh man, this is why I teach elementary school. But um, yeah, so I'm liking it and I will continue to work on it. Okay, my final whip is the Starflake make-along, which is the Stephen West make-along. So if you are participating, you really probably don't have to look away this week because I haven't finished Clue 1 yet and Clue 2 came out last Friday, so I'm not quite a week behind yet, but I am getting there. Um, so Clue 3 will come out this Friday. Maybe I'll be on Clue 2 by then. Who knows? It's okay. Um, but now I feel like I can freely talk about it because everyone's already seen Clue 1. So if you haven't seen Clue 1, now's a good time to stop. But if you have, then if you're doing it and you're already onto Clue 2, you're not gonna see anything new here. Okay, so where I was last week, I had made one shape. I called it a shape. Now I'm gonna tell you it's a polygon. <laughs> that doesn't really give it away, does it? Polygon? Isn't that like a generic? Like I said, I, did, I teach elementary school and I teach reading, so polygon is just like a generic name for a shape, right? I don't know. I had only done one shape and it was this black one. So since then, and I really can't show you much either because I'm mid row and on too small of a needle, I'm on a 24, but I have made many more shapes. I put my little Hedwig, um, I'm all Harry Potter themed this week, Hedwig marker. I think this one's simply serving too, but I'm, I'm not 100%, I think it is. And I have, they connect and make the, I think what's the top of your shawl? You never know with Stephen West, but this does seem to be like the top of a shawl to me. And then I have picked up my stitches and started doing some striping. Wow, this is really not showing you what it's going to look like. I'm sorry that it's on the needles like that. But you can kind of see that it's going to start striping. This part is gartery and this part is stockinette so that it recedes. I wasn't super happy with my color choices last week. I thought maybe I should have stick stuck with the pink but done gold and it actually looks really peachy not super pink as it does as it did in person but when it's paired with this dark charcoaly black it really is gray but um it kind of it just looks different it looks more peach which is cool and then also there's dark speckles in the pinky peach so it actually turned out really good. So I'm happy with my colors now, happier than I was um, before. And so I think I'm definitely getting the contrast needed. Um, I kind of have an idea of what comes next and I know that my colors are going to pop for sure. So this has been so much fun. I use this to take a break from my design and I did all of this in like a couple days um, or a couple evenings. So if you were ever nervous about joining a mystery knit along because you couldn't finish it, don't be. You just need to clear everything else, all your other whips out first, which is what I should have done. Um, but it didn't really take much time at all. And it's so much fun to knit Stephen West patterns because he just is so innovative, but not like he just explains it in such a clear way. And you're like, oh, I never ever would have thought to do that before. So, so much fun. I. I'm seriously enjoying it so much. So later today, I don't know what I'm gonna work on. I'll probably start working, trying to finish up clue number one. We have um, family coming over for dinner. My husband is making chili right now. It smells so good. And so I need something simple to work on while they're there. So I think I'll work on that, maybe. 
Okay, so um, I have some Love and Stitches news. Uh, one, make sure you, if you want to, um, you can go join our Ravelry group. There I kind of just like post every episode with a few links um, to like projects that I'm working on and stuff. Um, I don't really do a full show notes thing. I try to really include stuff on the bottom of the screen, but if you were looking for quick links, Ravelry is a, uh, the Ravelry group is a great place to go. You can also put in questions for me under the Ask Me thread. I don't know what's happening, but no questions there perfectly fine. I might have to start coming up with a new segment or something. Um, but other news, I had uh, two video tutorials come out this week. Um, basically, they're the same stitch, but right and left-handed. So I rounded out my basic crochet series with the treble crochet or triple crochet right and left-handed videos. And those came out actually today. Um, so yeah, if you are interested in expanding your crochet skills with a taller stitch, you can go check out that triple slash treble crochet there. Um, also, <laughs> this is kind of big. Um, I have started, I guess I can't say that, I have posted one blog post and hope to continue to post every week. So when I first started, before I did a video, um, it was after I had Instagram, but it was before I really did like, I, before I designed everything, I had a blog. And I blogged about mostly knitting and crochet, but also like other life things like cooking and reading and everything. And since then, things have kind of gone in a different direction. I started doing I started on um, IGTV doing those 10 minute videos and then I moved over to YouTube in January of this year. And so the, since then my blog has not gotten like any attention from me. The last post I actually did was in April, which is so long ago. So I had that desire finally come back to start posting on the blog again. Um, and it's what I'm going to be posting on there is mostly going to be um, knitting and crochet centered. So it'll be like one blog post about one thing and then that's it. Probably going along with maybe a video that I have or just a project that I'm working on that week or a design that I've just finished and it'll kind of just flow from there. So last week, I, since I was feeling so much stress, I actually talked about knitting and stress in some ways to not stress over your projects. Now, I was really speaking to myself when I was writing that post, um, but you might find some of those tips to be helpful. There's a little bit of sarcasm and silliness in there, of course, um, and that's just how I like to write sometimes. So um, you can find that at knittynatty.com. The blog is always the, f the homepage, and then there's links at the top to some of my other um, sources. But yeah, so hopefully blogging is becoming a routine again. I am excited about it. I already have plans for like the next few weeks. So hopefully that'll continue to flow naturally. I think that's when it's the best. Okay, so we're on to life. This is probably a relatively short episode. Um, so it was a long weekend this past weekend, which was really nice. Um, my husband and I both had Monday off. Well, kinda, actually that's not true. He didn't have Monday off. I had Monday off, which was really nice. Um, but we kind of just, over the weekend, because Monday was more of like a holiday, because I had it off, um, we just really like relaxed. And Sunday, he got to spend all day doing what he wanted to do, and I got to spend all day doing what I love to do, which is knit and watch Netflix. So that was really, really nice. Um, I watched... I finished a season of a show that I'm going to tell you about, but just so you know, it's, um, well, I'll tell you the name of it and then I'll explain. So it's a Netflix series called Unbelievable. And it was, to me, it was really, really well done. I really loved it. I thought it was a great, like, I think it was like a 10 episode hour each um, series. There was a lot of people in it that are in other Netflix series that I like. The girl from, uh, I, whenever I start talking, I always forget what, <laughs> the actual names of things. The Dolly Parton movie. I don't remember. She's in it. Um, anyway, 
super good. I felt super well done, but it the content of it is definitely not for everybody. Um, so there's sort of like a trigger warning there that you probably um, will want to watch or read the description first. And if you're not sure, then watch the trailer and see if it's a show that would be for you because it's definitely intense um, and there's definitely adult content in it. Um, it's very serious. The matter of the whole series is very serious, very important to talk about. Um, I don't know, it's really interesting. I learned a lot about um, at least how this series portrays like what happens in a like police detective case, which was really interesting. Um, I know that TV is not reality, but there's always a little bit of truth in like what they choose to film. Um, so I thought that was really interesting. Also, I believe the story they were following, I think it is a true story, whether all of it that they chose to include was true or not. I need to do a little more research on it. But anyway, if you can, if you can handle the topic of Unbelievable, it's really, really great. Um, and I would highly recommend it. I, I loved it. I binged the this, this series, seriously. I think I started on like Thursday and finished it on Sunday and thought it was great. Um, so coming up, I am excited for this weekend because we um, have a football game. This past weekend, we watched football. We went out with our friends and watched football on TV, which was fun, but we didn't actually go to a game because my husband's university, SMU, wasn't playing. They had a bye week. So really excited to see them this week. Every single game is like more and more intense because they keep winning, which I'm not used to. My college, Tennessee, is terrible. They did win last weekend, which good for them. Um, great job, guys. But they're not gonna win this weekend because they're playing Alabama, um, and they're just really bad. It's, and, I've, and when I went to school at Tennessee, they weren't very good either. So I am so used to losing that it doesn't phase me anymore, but then SMU is doing so well. They are undefeated so far. I'm really, really excited. I'm happy for my husband because he didn't have that when he went to school there. So it just means every game is like higher stakes. So I'm excited to go watch this weekend. Um, yeah, so now I've just gotta go get ready for our family to come over. Like I said, my husband's making chili Skyline chili, which has like cinnamon and chocolate in it, which is different and unique. It's really good um, it Smells amazing. So I'm gonna go Help him by cleaning up the kitchen. I think because <laughs> I'm not really that good at cooking um, and trying to just get ready for everyone to come over. So Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you again next week. Bye